Welcome back to History in Motion, proudly brought to you by Midas. The Mercedes-Benz 280 was originally built as a road car, but with its independent suspension, it makes a natural progression to the track and its reliability makes it almost bulletproof. The easy availability and affordability of spare parts makes it a firm favorite for many competitors. It's time for the Liqui Moly Endurance Cars two-hour endurance race, which will run into the night, and the drivers are looking forward to it. The plan of, the, of attack is to finish Caroline, um, to two-hour race. So I think it's going to take uh, quite a heavy toll on the body. So um, I'm sure the car will finish. I think the uh, issue is whether the driver is going to be able to finish. It's going to be an interesting race. Um, the, the Gillespie team, it's their, their second race. So I'm going to have to take the fight to them. I mean, it's going to be good. Pete's quite a bit quicker than us, so I don't really have massive hopes of catching him, but it's, it's a long race. Two hours is quite a time to, for stuff to happen. It's always a, a joy to drive these cars, and Alex is driving well. Um, you know, Peter Jenkins is going like a rocket, and I think we're going to have a bit of, bit of work here to catch him. I, I think we should finish fairly well. Unfortunately, I'm a little less slower than Mark is, so I'm going to do the first leg and not do the full hour. Then we're going to hand it up to Mark to do an hour and 20 minutes. So we're hoping he can catch the rest of them, and we're hoping the car stays together long enough. Yeah, Tim uh, has very kindly let me uh, share his very, very fast and uh, yeah, challenging car. It's uh, very easy to drive and, and really a lot of fun. And we'll see what happens. You know, endurance racing is exactly that. Uh, there's a bit of weather coming. Who knows? Leading the field, it's Peter Jenkins in his Chevron B19. Alongside him is the second Chevron of Alex Gillespie and AJ Koenig. Tim Clamp and Mark Futcher are in the first Lotus, fourth on the grid with Jeffrey Kruger and John Glover in fifth. Unfortunately, the Kruger Glover Lotus is in the pits as the field roll over the start and the race begins. Jenkins holds on to the lead and it's a fairly sedate start for most of the field, bearing in mind they have to make it to the end of the two hours. Barry Nell and his Datsun leads the VW Beetle with Alan Poulter at the wheel and Kubis Britz in the Porsche 924 makes a move round the outside of Turn 1. At the front it's still Jenkins who is followed by Gillespie with a Porsche of Dino Scribante right in his tail. Down the back straight and Gillespie is having problems with the Chevron as the Scribante Porsche sails past him. All this, and he hasn't yet completed a lap. Into the pits, he brings the Chevron. The baby blue Foxy with Alan Porter at the wheel passes the Mercedes with Jose Vasquez at the wheel. What's the problem with the Chevron? It's just stuck in gear. So we're just, we just opening up the back to try and understand what's going on in the gearbox. It looks like we found the problem. It looks like one of the selectors has gone in. I have no idea how it's happened, but it looks like we're going to get running again, hopefully. Well, a hive of activity surrounds the Chevron as they try to get it going again and back onto the track. On the track, Jan Jakobs passes Barry Nell down the inside. Now pushing hard, fights back and retakes the position. Alex Gillespie gets himself back into the Chevron and it's not long before he is back on the track and trying to unlap himself from all the time lost. JP Brittenen comes up on the Lotus of David Jeremy and makes the pass through turn 11 and onto the long back straight. The Gillespie Chevron B19 is back on the track and trying to make up for last time. Peter Jenkins currently leading the race, laps Quibus Brits in the Porsche through turn four. Alex Gillespie stint didn't last long and he is back into the pits. Trouble for race leader Peter Jenkins as he is stopped on the infield. Covers off and the team are back at work trying to solve the issue that is causing all the problems. Jeffrey Kruger brings in his Lotus as well. CV joints jumping out and uh, losing drive to the one wheel, so it's a nightmare. Caused my accident in the first race, second race, to we'll carry on. Peter Jenkins is having a look at the back of his car, trying to figure out what's wrong. Kruger is out again in the Lotus, and Gillespie heads out as well. Problem hopefully solved. Fritz Kleinans in the Rothmans Porsche leads James Forbes in the baby blue Lotus through turn nine. Jenkins has managed to get his car going again and he will limp it round to the pits. Yeah, I know we haven't had much luck today with this car. Uh, fortunately, uh, John had an incident in the, in the Lotus race which caused the radiator to puncture. Uh, but we managed to fix it now quickly and then we missed about a few first, about six laps of the first of the race. 
And then um, the CV kept on, kept on popping out the whole time. So we have no choice but to retire the car and uh, end off the last race of the year in the pits. What caused Jenkins problems? The uh, carburetor just fell out of its mounting. So the car kind of was stopped going. I thought it was the motor. Pulled off, scratched around underneath. I saw the carburetor lying there, so I managed to push it back in and get back to the pits. Luckily, it's after 20 minutes, so we can do our compulsory pit stop as well and put a bit of fuel in. And we should be able to run uh, until the end of the race. The freshly fueled Chevron makes its way onto the track. Race leader Dino Scramante comes up to lap Sean Hewitt and James Forbes down the inside straight to turn six. Red Stig Mark Futcher waits for his turn to come. The Gillespie Chevron seems to be running okay as he leads the Forbes and Hewitt Lotuses through turn two and three. Kubis Brett refuels the Porsche 924, ready for Son Willem to take the wheel and steer it to the end. So yeah, I did the short bit. The young man can do the long bit. What's the track like? Well, it's a fantastic, fantastic track. Um, really. It's really great. Driver change done in the Clamp Futcher Lotus. That was absolutely fantastic. It's the best laps I've done around here. Took me a long time to learn it, but it was incredible. The car's running well, so I'm hoping Mac, Mark can unlap himself in the next few laps. Barry Nell heads back out onto the track after his stop. Dirk Vente is in the pits. Um, yeah, with a puncture in the left back tyre, just on corner four. And uh, yeah, haven't got a spare, so unfortunately out for the race. Oh, it's the car going other way. Just picking up. we been battling with second gear the whole day, but slowly I was working way around with third and fourth only, but just getting faster and faster, like it always does. Anyway. Alex Gillespie is trying to make up some laps as he comes up on the Scribante Porsche and knocks another lap off his tally as he tries to make up some of the last time. In the pits, Ubi van Moltke is doing a little pre-race dance before he takes over from Jose Vazquez. But yeah, Jeff was kind enough to invite me to share today. We're sharing uh, in the nine hours at uh, Cape Town with Dave Jeremy making up the third driver. So this was a bit of a practice for me. Privileged to drive. Uh, we're running well today, so uh, great way to end the season once again. Jeff Gable will make his way out to begin his stint as David Jeremy comes in for his pit stop. There seems to be a problem with his Lotus. Low oil pressure. So we might need to top up the oil a bit and no second gear. So... Otherwise good. Otherwise great, yeah. No, it's good fun though, it's good fun. So... You got sore hands? Very sore hands, very sore hands. That's, that? Yeah. That's gonna get a lot worse, I'm afraid. I should buy a bit uh, thicker gloves. The Blue Beetle's in for a refuel and driver change. It was quite a good experience because I've never driven a Beetle before. It's a totally different to my car, but I had fun. I had good fun. I mean, it's really a hard car to drive, but it's fun. It's fun, really fun. And uh, the fueling was quite a bit, of a bit of a mess up, but anyway, we'll get it right next time. Sean Hewitt is pushing hard in his green machine as he comes up to pass Jeff Gable as they run wheel to wheel through turn two, and Gable leads Hewitt into turn three. Jose Vasquez has brought in Ubi van Moltke's Merck. It was great. You know, it's a bit difficult with the, with the fast cars overtaking you and letting, having to let them go. And I uh, was a bit nervous. You know, I had to bring the car back in one piece and all that. But it was great. I uh, enjoyed it. Uh. A gangle of Lotuses make their way through turn two. Far ahead, it's Mark Futcher in the number 19. A great three-way dice between Jeff Gable, Sean Hewitt and David Jeremy. Hewitt has a look down the inside of Gable, but can't make it stick. Through turn four, the headlights stream, and David Jeremy has found a way past Sean Hewitt. Pit board out for Fritz Kleinans, who pulls in for his mandatory two minute pit stop. It's going well. The track's new, but we're suffering. It's uh, mm. like this, it's cold. So now I'm enjoying it. Uh, at the moment, not too tired. I thought I was going to be worse, but uh, now I feel fine. I think uh, it's about uh, 50 minutes to go, so yeah, we'll go. It. We'll do it. On the track and after their earlier problems, both the Chevrons are circulating, counting down the minutes and trying to cram in as many laps as they can. Barry Nell is back in the pits. I took a, I took a chance, but I uh, ran out of tyres and uh, we're quickly going to change and hopefully we can get back quickly. Uh, so you're running on canvas? Yeah, canvas. It's feeling really good. Uh, 
in the beginning of the interview when I said two hours is a long time, a lot of stuff can happen. Didn't expect it to happen to me, but I guess that's the nature of a two hour race. Um, gear lever got stuck in gear twice. First time it's happened to us, so it's, we're gonna have to have a look at why it's doing it. So it just was taking a split second longer to change gears and not crashing it through, and it seems to be holding out just fine. We think we have an oil pressure problem. We get an OPA signal on the, on, the, on the dashboard, but we still get an oil pressure, so we sent it back out again to go and finish. And off Mark Butcher goes back onto the track. Problems for Jan Jakobs. No lights. Don't know why, but you're trying to fix it now. So you'll get otherwise, it going. It's going well. Just the light problem. Yeah, just the right problem. Lights are working. And back on the track, Jakobs passes the beetle of Harry Lombard and tries to make up some time. It's running all right, having a little bit of an issue with fourth gear, it's starting to grate. And I think the brakes are getting a little bit hot, but otherwise we're going strong. 40 minutes and we'll be home. Hewitt accelerates out of the pits and back onto the track to finish off the last 40 minutes. Dino Scribante makes his way into the pits for his stop and refuel for both car and driver as it's quite hot out there on the track. Jan Jakobs comes past back into the pits. It's the same problem, Caroline, with the, the carburetor. Just, we just can't keep just get it mounted properly. So it's certainly not my day. I've just got to get across the finish line and then I'll win the championship. So that's my main aim today. I don't care where I finish. <laughs> Mark Futter brings Tim Clamps Lotus back into the pits. The team are trying to figure out why Jan Jakobs' lights aren't staying on. Lee Scribante is in for his stop. The uh, alternator uh, belt has come off, so it's going to take us a little bit longer, but we'll get going. And how do you think it's going out there? Are you looking forward to your stint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At my age, you look forward to anything. So, yeah, uh, fortunately with this year, I don't have to do a hell of a lot of driving. You know, JP's done very well. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to hang in there and uh, churn off some, some decent laps, I hope. We've uh, been battling with the, the headlights. We've uh, seemed to have melted a relay or a wire or something, so they've been intermittent. And uh, to lose headlights at 175 k's an hour on the back straight is a little bit unnerving. Um, car was going beautifully. Um, running in the sort of the 210s, 211s. We seem to have gone past a couple of the other 7s on more than one occasion. But uh, it's endurance racing. Yeah, we had a great time out there. Tim drove very nicely. And uh, yeah, lovely evening. Dino Scribante leads the way, followed by Jeff Gable and David Jeremy with about 25 minutes to go. And it's lights out for Jan Jakobs. Ubi van Moltke leads Willem Britz in a battleful position. These two aren't separated by much and they're really pushing hard. The quick chevron of Peter Jenkins is bearing down on them and he will pass the pair through turn 10. Down the start finish straight and second place man Jeff Gable is coming up to put another lap on Willem Britz and Ubi van Moltke. Willem Britz takes the inside line and moves ahead of van Moltke as they head towards turn two. Great racing into the night. Headlights stream towards the camera and van Moltke retakes his position from Willem Britz. Down the start, finish straight, and Dino Scribante leads the field. Round the final corner, Dino Scribante comes to take the checkered flag and victory in the Liqui Moly two-hour endurance race. Jeff Gable came home in second place a lap behind. David Jeremy took third position despite his blistered hands. Sean Hewitt finished fourth and won the 2015 Lotus Endurance Championship. Despite not finishing in the top 10, Peter Jenkins secured the 2015 Liqui Moly Endurance Championship. Uh, it's a very physical circuit, so you don't get uh, too much chance to rest, and I think that's why it was a long two hours. But uh, yeah, look, I mean, I started in P3. Um, had a, had a decent start, was kind of sitting where I was, where I was happy to sit, and I think uh, the two Chevrons seemed to have a bit of a problem. After the pit stop, I think the guys told me I had a, a one-lap lead, but I wasn't quite sure. I had Peter Jenkins catching me, so I thought, eh, better just uh, give it a bit of a squeeze at the end. I'm very, very pleased. This is James and our, my first time sharing a car. It's a precursor to uh, the nine hour in a couple weeks' time. Uh, pretty, pretty darn good first, first crack at it. Yeah, it's a nice team to be in. and. Uh... Good result, great start to uh, an enduring partnership, I don't doubt. Uh, but it has to be said, congratulations to Sean Hewitt, who did wrap up the Lotus Championship today. He's driven superbly all year in the endurance races, so uh, uh, hats off to him. And uh... it's a little bit exhausted. The, the fact that I won the championship hasn't quite sunk in as yet, but I'm sure it will very soon. In about 45 minutes, started developing a bit of a gearbox issue. Started grating on the upshift from third to fourth, so I had to nurse that. Then 
started pushing a little bit again, developed a brake problem, started getting a bit of spark from the front wheels, so I had to tap off and nurse it home. <laughs> it wasn't an easy race at all. And this, this track isn't easy to drive for a long time, so I was a little bit thankful that uh, I got some resting time in the pits. I won the sprint championship a couple of years ago, but this endurance one has always been uh, the one I've wanted. I was uh, thought to thought to once by uh, Franco Scribanti, and uh, but I'm very very happy to have won it this year. History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport, Gumtree, Mitsubishi Electric, and their associated sponsors. That's it for 2015. From all of us at the Midas Historic Tour, we hope you have a fantastic festive season and we look forward to seeing you in 2016.